Welcome back to the channel guys. Today's video is going to be part one of a two-part series that covers the Awoken storyline in Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. This episode is going to focus on the Awoken's origins all the way through House of Wolves in Destiny 1, and part two will be what happens from Taken King through Forsaken and the current day. If you go on to enjoy this series, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, but let's get right into part one. The Awoken are one of three playable races in Destiny. Many notable characters in the Destiny storyline happen to be Awoken, like Commander Zavala, Asher Mir, Petra Venge, and most importantly, Mara and Aldrin Sov. The Awoken resemble humans, with exception to having pale blue, purple, or gray skin, and their luminescent eyes with glowing irises. Beyond physical appearance, some Awoken even possess powers and abilities beyond their human ancestors. The Tekkens, for example, are able to use telepathy and illusions. So what gave them these powers, and what caused them to take on these new physical deformities? You see, the Awoken were actually once humans, trying to escape our solar system, but something happened amidst the collapse that would change them forever. Our story begins with Mara Sav and her brother Aldrin, as well as their mother Osana. They were just three of the 900 crew members aboard a colony ship called the Yang Li Wei. The purpose of the Yang Li Wei was to lead a colony mission intended to find and settle a habitable planet where humans could live without the travelers' involvement in their affairs. In addition to its 900 crew members, the ship carried 40,000 colonists consisting of men, women, and children. As Captain Alice Lee led the Yang Li Wei through space, attempting to flee the solar system, the ship was intercepted and trapped by a vessel of darkness. The darkness had begun to descend on the solar system, leaving the Yang Li Wei and its crew to be caught right in the middle of the collapse of humanity. As the ship was engulfed by the black force of darkness, Captain Lee attempted to gain mercy from the darkness by declaring neutrality in the war between light and dark, siding with neither side. As she did so, the travelers struck out with a beam of light in an attempt to hold the darkness at bay. The energy and intensity between the light and darkness's interaction resulted in the formation of a black hole which swallowed the Yang Li Wei. Inside this pocket of the universe, the Yang Li Wei remained fully intact, however, its crew and colonists were changed forever. Forged from forces of light and darkness, the crew and its colonists emerged reborn as Awoken. Due to this rebirth, the Awoken would lose part of their memories and their past life as humans, and they would appear to have darkness flowing under their skin. They would form their own society and build upon their new homeworld they called the Distributary. In the Distributary's universe, time flows differently. In the few centuries humanity suffered the Dark Age, thousands of years had passed in the Awoken society, allowing plenty of time to flourish and build their society up. Inside the Distributary, Marasov was the ruler of the Awoken and her brother Aldrin by her side. Eventually, Mara would realize that they were living inside this pocket universe, separate from the rest of the solar system, thanks to some bits of radio transmissions they picked up on towards the end of the Dark Age. It was at this time that many Awoken took up residence in the asteroid belt, colonized the reef, and built cities and habitats like the Dreaming City. Others returned to Earth, where their descendants now fight for the city. Earthborn Awoken sometimes venture out to the reef, hoping to learn its secrets, but find no special welcome from the reclusive queen. When Aldrin intercepted messages between all the fallen houses and the Tekken saw them uniting on Earth, Mara realized they were united for an assault on the last city. At first, she believed there was little she could do to prevent the assault, but the House of Wolves then passed through the reef and stopped at Ceres. Their million-strong army would seal the fate of the last city, and Mara was left with a choice to either let them pass or halt them by revealing the Awoken's presence and the extent of their power. Bringing the Awoken fleet to Ceres, Mara was contacted by Varixis, Kell of Wolves, who demanded her surrender and stated he would only take the Awoken's ships if they submitted. Mara responded that she was a noble too, but Varixis claimed that she had no bloodline and no true power. Mara then unleashed the power of the Harbingers at that point, annihilating more than half of the House of Wolves and killing Varixis. Doing so caused the remaining half of the House of Wolves to scatter amongst the asteroid belt, preventing the House of Wolves from reinforcing the Fallen at the Battle of Twilight Gap, ensuring that the Guardians would win that battle. Marasov showed the remaining House of Wolves mercy and a home in the Reef in exchange for their allegiance, making her the new House of Wolves Kel. Other scattered Fallen from the House of Wolves would not accept the Queen's offer and would instead try to rise up against her to claim the throne as the House of Wolves Kel. Irxis, Wolf Baroness, Perixis, the Howling, 
and Skolas the Rabid. A civil war amongst these three would break out to claim the throne as Kell of Wolves. And after a long battle, Skolas would defeat both Erxis and Perixis, declaring himself as Kell of Wolves. After the many battles, Aldrin's followers, the Crows, made contact with Varix, a former scribe of House Judgment. Varix was displeased with Skolas as he was too vicious and hateful. It's also rumored that it was Skolas who docked Varix's arms, making Varix willing to side with the Reef to stop him. During this time, some of the Crows went to Jupiter, perhaps to investigate the Wolves' origins or to meet with the Nine. In either case, the Nine took offense. With most of the lieutenants dead or captured, Skolas planned an attack on the Awoken Fortress of Cybele to change the tide of the war. Thanks to Varric's betrayal, however, the Reef knew of this, and so when he arrived, the Awoken were ready with a large fleet to fight him. Defeated in a decisive battle, surrounded on all sides, Skolas was captured and locked away in the Prison of Elders. With most of the wolf nobility imprisoned in the Prison of Elders, Marasov would again be declared by Varric as the new Kell of Wolves and advised other wolf captives to swear allegiance to her. Now this is where we the Guardian come into the story. After our conversation with the Exo Stranger on Venus, she tells us we need to find the Black Garden, prompting us to speak with the Awoken in the Reef. So, these are the trespassers demanding an audience. We didn't mean to trespass. The Queen herself judges who may or may not enter the realm. Me? I see no reason she should be available for whatever washes up at the reef. But here we are. We've come to ask for help. Fallen! It is afraid of the Fallen. It does not understand these ones are mine. Apologies, Your Grace. I am a guardian from Earth. We're searching for the Black Garden. Why? We seek to destroy the darkness at its heart. You want to turn it into a battleground? How unimaginative. Do you know where it is? Everyone knows where it is. The hard part is getting in. Can you help us? And why would we do that? The Queen requests counsel with her brother. Mara and Aldrin then discuss something in private that leads us to believe they have a secret motive behind what they are about to tell us to do next. We'll make you a key. How's that? All we need is the head of a Vex Gatelord. A uh, Gatelord? Uh, we... Why do you want a Vex head? Oh, we don't. And I doubt we'll get one either. But it's your only hope of getting into the Black Garden. We will return. Or die on Venus. Either way. Aldrin is confident that this will be the last moment he'll ever see us. When we head to Venus, we make quick work of the Gate Lord and promptly return to the Reef with our success. Obviously upset by our triumphant return, Aldrin tries to get us to leave empty-handed, but Mara is impressed with our resourcefulness and leads to her helping us get into the Black Garden anyway. But she reminds us that she has done us a favor and expects us to return that favor in the future. During the time that our character continues on to the Black Garden and destroys its heart, the Fallen House of Winter raided the Prison of Elders and freed Axor, an Archon of the House of Wolves who had refused to bow to Mara Sov. The prison raid was led by none other than Tanix, who the House of Winter hired to help free Axor. It isn't long before a team of Guardians is sent to put an end to Axor on Venus before he can be fully restored of Aether. He doesn't make it out alive. Shortly after this, Queen Mara gifted an imprisoned Skolas to the Nine to commemorate their victory against the Fallen and as an apology for angering them when Aldrin's Crows visited their territory on Rhea, one of Saturn's moons. But shortly after this exchange, Skolas was freed by one of their agents and given a ship. 
Declaring himself Kel of Kells, Skolas found renewed purpose and led a new uprising to unite the Fallen and claim the Traveler for themselves. Those Fallen who were under Marasov's command heard of Skolas' return and would rise against the Queen, attempting to assassinate her. Many of Mara's awoken guards were slaughtered by her former wolf guards, and the reef was thrown into chaos. Outraged by their betrayal, Mara placed bounties on the heads of those who had betrayed her. She called on Petra Venge and the Guardians to hunt down the wolves who betrayed her alongside the dozen of wolf nobles who had escaped from the Prison of Elders. After a mission we completed on the Ishtar Sink on Venus, Petra informed Mara that they had confirmed it was Skolas leading the rebellion. Mara was displeased with the result of this mission as Skolas had escaped and asked what had become of the House of Winter. Petra reported that many of the Winter Fallen had taken up the Wolves' banner and that Skolas was attempting to rally the Fallen Houses behind him. As Mara silently processed this development, Petra claimed to have a plan in place for us to stop him, and the Queen ordered her to continue the hunt and declared that she could not fail in this task. During this House of Wolves campaign, we slayed many of those who had betrayed Marasov and weakened the Fallen Houses who had chosen to rally behind Skolas. Skolas would make one last ditch effort atop the Citadel and Venus to pull the entire House of Wolves through Vex portals thanks to acquiring some Vex technology in the Vault of Glass. But with the help of Marasov, Petrovenge, Aldrin and his crows, and our Guardian character, we were able to capture Skolas once again. Back in the Prison of Elders, Mara and Aldrin personally came to Skolas' cell to inspect him. Upon arriving, Skolas whispered something Varix would interpret as Light Snuffer and Darkbinder. Mara regarded Skolas with a neutral expression, and Varix informed her that Skolas would say no more. Aldrin then questioned what sentence she would pass on Skolas. Mara dismissively stated that one would not sentence a rabid animal or a thrall, and that her justice would be wasted on him. Instead, she would offer Skolas as a gift to Varix as a combatant for the Guardians to slay in the Prison of Elders. As she left the chamber, Mara ordered her brother to send crows to Osiris on Mercury and another to Eris Morn at the tower to inform them of Skolas' words. Shortly after sending that message, Mara held a meeting in her throne room attended by Aldrin, the Tekkens, Shuro and Setia, Osiris, and Eris. In the meeting, they discussed many things. Most notably, though, was Oryx. Eris declared that she cared about one thing, bringing an end to Oryx the Taken King. After a moment of silence, Mara smiled and praised Eris' words, declaring that they will forge a plan to end the Hive God. And that sets us up perfectly for the next episode where we will dive into everything that happens with the Awoken during the Taken King through Forsaken and Current. If you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe, and if you did enjoy this episode, then be sure to leave a like and a comment down below letting me know what you think about part one of the Awoken story. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I'll see you all in the next one.